Hello, welcome to another Shoot Film episode. It's been a while since I haven't uh, done one of these episodes, but I've been super busy with university. Anyway, that's not the reason why I'm talking. I'm talking because I want to present... I want to present uh, today's camera. It's the Lomo LCA120. I'll first make a summary about the camera, my impressions, my review and whatnot, and then I'll show you the pictures that I took. If you want to go straight to the pictures and you want to ignore my review, uh, just go to this time frame and <laughs> you will find exactly what you're looking for. If you want to hear the review, just stay here. I'll talk about the camera and then I'll show you the images. I hope you enjoy it. This is a bigger version of the regular Lomo LCA, which is, um, oddly enough, this feels like a more sturdy camera. This one is made out of parts of metal, it's very sturdy, very durable, and it's not as expensive as this one. The Lomo LCA 120 is an expensive camera. You can find it from, I will say, probably $300, $400 in the used market. Depends, sometimes you can find one for $300 or $290 or whatever, so if you're lucky, but usually it rounds around $350, $400. So it's an expensive camera. That's one of the reasons why I was always on the verge of, should I buy it or not? Does it make sense to purchase one of these? Because this, I want this camera for my own entertainment. I have other wide angle cameras. I have the Lomo LCA wide, which is a nice wide angle camera. Uh, but this, this is pretty similar to the Lomo LC wide, but in 120. And that, guys, <laughs> this is a game changer. This is a really fun camera. This is probably the most fun camera to use I have in 120. It, it, it has this weird thing to open it. I guess for the sake of tradition, they keep this like, uh, like it, you, it would open like the traditional Lomo LCA, but in reality, just move this thing and uh, it appears. It's like a nose, it's like a big nose camera, uh, but it's really cool. On this side, as you can see, you have the different possibilities for focusing. You have 0 0.6 meters, you have 1 meter, you have 2.5 meters, and you also have infinity. Those are the four positions you have for focusing. Once you close the camera, you cannot see the distances. These only operate in reality once you open it and then you can actually see it. On this side you have nothing. This is the big difference with other uh, Lomo LCAs. Let me show you. The classic Lomo LCA has on one side the distances and on the other side you have the uh, apertures, which I almost always leave on auto because this works for when you shoot a flash. Uh, it will automatically fire on 1 60th of a second and then you just decide the aperture so the flash does not burn the whole image. But on the LCY you only have two distances and you have no selection of um, f-stop. So actually this is more similar to the LCA 120. One of the things that I adore about this camera is that it's super light. Since it's made out of plastic uh, and it's not made out of metal, it weighs more or less the same as my Lomo LCA and it's more comfortable to carry around because I can carry this on my shoulder or on my neck. In the Lomo LCA I am forced to carry it on my wrist, which it's good, I'm used to it, I have no problems, but after you know, walking around with the camera, you start feeling it like you want to do something, but you always have to have this position on your hand. That's a big difference with the LCA 120, which I just carry around and I don't worry at all. Uh, and if I need to put it like this or carrying like a tote bag or on my neck, it's always comfortable and it's it's very even noticeable. Like I can't tell it's there unless, of course, when I walk, I feel like a little pwit pwit pwit. <laughs> I feel a little pwit pwit. That's how I feel, and I know it's there. But aside from that, it's really comfortable. The ISO on this camera is really easy to set, and that was a big problem with the other Lomo LCS, which you had to put the nail and try to move the ISO wheel. In here, it's really easy. You just move it like this and you change it. It goes from 100 to 1600 and yeah, you have all in range, 100, 200, 400, 800 or 1600. Pretty cool, I like it, it's super easy. If you wanna shoot double exposures, it's super easy. You just move this lever to uh, multiple exposures and you can take all the pictures that you want. And when you're done and you're like, I'm happy, I have taken enough pictures, you just lift it and you can point the camera and keep shooting as usual. If I have one complaint with this camera is that loading it, it's quite hard. It's not the hardest camera to load ever, but it's really hard uh, compared to other ones, especially compared to a Rolly. 
the roll effects just put the roll of film and just wind it and it's super automatic. In here it's not as easy. The big problem I have when loading this camera is that these things that will allow you to put the uh, spool in here and move it, look, it's it's hard to make it fit, so you have to uh, you have to wiggle it around and it's, oh, it feels like it's gonna break, but it's okay, but it's not really comfortable. Uh, so you put this in here and then you have to put the other one and it always feels clumsy. What I've done is I usually take the mask off and then I load the film from the side and I put it and once it's there and it's sitting, then I put the, uh, this thing back in. This might sound like a small detail, but bear with me for a second. These are some shots from the episode. Here's one, here's another, and as you can see, there's a lot of space in between frames. This might not be a big issue. Actually, it's pretty comfortable when you have to cut the negative strips in order to scan them. But the problem is sometimes these spaces in between frames are so big that you end up cutting the last frame. I'll show you. You see, this is one of the last frames. This is one of the last frames too, and this is the last one. And it's cut, it, like it should be up to here, but that's not how it works. The camera took so much space in between frames that you ended up with this image. So it's actually 11 shots and I don't know, three quarters or five sevenths of a picture. Um, the way around this, it's fairly easy. You have to align the arrow of the film, which marks the beginning of the film uh, for the winding with this thing in here. Uh, actually, hopefully you can align it like around here to, to give it more space. In my first roll of film, I did that and in the second I did it like a little past it. My suggestion is leave the arrow around here and you'll be fine. You'll, you'll have 12 frames. If you align the arrow around here, you'll probably end up with 11 and 3 quarters of a picture. So that's my suggestion. And now the question I always ask myself, would I recommend this camera? Depends. Uh, for me, this is exactly the camera I was looking for. I have the Rolleiflex for the shots that I want to take like nice portraits and have some time to compose or actually go outside and just... I like the fact that Rolleiflex is a 2.8 so I can have like a shallow depth of field if I need to or if it's too dark outside I can use it. Uh, but this camera is perfect for walking around and just not thinking about it. You just open it up and take pictures. Um, I feel this one goes very much into the Lomo uh, feeling the brand tries to convey. Like I have shot Holgas before, uh, I've never shot a Diana, but I want to shoot one and probably make an episode about it. But the problem I have with those cameras is that since you cannot choose the parameters um, and you can only decide the distance, I feel like the camera is not actually thinking, it's not doing anything but being a black box and this camera is thinking for me. So I decide the distance from me and my subject and the camera will say, okay, this is the amount of light that there is and this is how I can solve it, this is the image that I should compose and blah, takes the picture and almost always the exposition is spot on. On this episode I try my best to show the camera in all the possible range of uh, situations where you can shoot it. So. Uh, some still shots where there was no movement, some other situations where there was like a strong light behind the subject, other situations when I was in like in the shades and I wanted to take a fast image and just move around. Some of the images are blurry, some others are not focused, but that's just how it is. Um, if you can take your time to compose and take every picture, of course the images are gonna look great. But if you don't have time for that and you're just trusting your instincts and going for it, you might find some errors or things that might happen that are unexpected. That's one of the beauties of this camera. I like the results of this one. It's surprisingly, surprisingly sharp. I was not expecting this. The Lomo LCA, it's kind of sharp, it's okay. I like how it renders colors more than anything, the classical Lomo LCA. But this one, I have not yet tried it with color film, uh, but with the black and white, it's crazy sharp. I really like it. It has some vignetting, of course, and you can color correct it uh, or correct it in post if you so desire. But if you don't, and if you just want to keep the uh, Lomo feel, you can keep it, and I think it looks pretty cool. So that's my small summary and review of this camera. Uh, I would, if you're into the Lomo vibe or if you are looking for an automatic 120 camera, this is what you're looking for. This is, to me, as far as I've tried, this is the best automatic 120 camera I've ever tried. It's so fun and like really 
the I usually have a problem when I'm shooting shoot film episodes because I have to take a whole role and sometimes I'm not really inspired I'm like oh god I'm on image 8 and I had to take 12 when it's like 120 roll and this time it was so fast like I grabbed the camera I went outside and I was like finding moments and whatnot I like wide angle camera so it was it was easier for me to use this camera uh, at the same time and this is one important thing since it's super wide I guess this camera it's it's pretty similar to a 17 millimeter or a 20 millimeter um, on a regular full frame camera uh, since it's so wide, you're forced to go close to your subjects. So whenever you see with this camera that the person you're taking a picture is like kind of like this close, bear in mind that I'm super close to the person. I'm like basically here taking the image. So I don't know. I think it this camera forces me to go outside of my comfort zone because we all like shooting people from afar. I don't know. That sounded creepy, but we all like to shoot people and take pictures of people. Shit, people sound creepy too. We all like to take pictures of people. <laughs> I guess if you're watching this channel, you're one of those people who are into uh, film photography and you like taking pictures of other people. You enjoy watching people, how they unfold in regular everyday situations and to capture one of those moments. This camera is perfect for that, but you have to be super up close. If you're a little far away, like some of the images in the video, they kind of work, but they feel boring. The best pictures are the ones that are right in your face. Um, and you can find ways of going like close to people without being a jerk, which I think it's super important. If you're just grabbing the camera and like sticking into the people's faces, it's gonna be uncomfortable and you're not gonna be like a nice person. But if you can actually find a way to get into other people's space and be respectful, you're gonna gain like better pictures and you're gonna get a new skill, which is super important. So this camera, at least to me, forces me to train that skill. It trains me to get into other people's spaces, be respectful and capture great images. So I highly suggest it and I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's go. Hey man, I'm sorry, can I take a picture of you? Like the light bounces on you, it looks like really cool. Is there a sure? chance that I can do it? Yeah, yeah. Ugly, man. No, it looks amazing, man. Yeah, you yeah. Sure? Thanks, man, that's great. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you, yeah. but you're just sitting in front of this light and you look really cool because all the rest is dark. Can I take you a picture? Sure. Awesome, that that's, looks so amazing. Thank you. You want me to look? No, that was perfect. <laughs> 